This is the Civilization 4 NLL. Hello and welcome back to the Civilization 4 Noble Leaders League. Today we have finally arrived at the opening day for Division 1. And now we are going to start seeing who is going to win the championship. Becoming the league champion. This game opening game of Division 1 is between Pakal the second ranked number 4 out of 52 and thus he is one of the favorites to win the league and become the first champion. He is up against 18th ranked Peter. Peter then one of the biggest favorites to get himself relegated. There is no doubt that in this first game of the season for these two, Pakal the second must be considered a heavy favorite due to his rank, but it's an opening day. Everything can happen. Civ 4 is a weird game. Let's find out. Let's take a look at the starting positions. And we have Pakal the second with, uh, well, not too good. Let's get rid of the interface. You can see some gems. There are pigs. There are some spices. There is copper, ivory, and some clams up there as well. Let's get the interface back so I have the minimap. It's a very long continent. It is divided in the middle here approximately. So <laughs> if this was an even contest then Huanika Pak uh, uh, sorry Pakal the second should be able to get this while Peter should be able to get this but um, that is not certain let's go over and look at Peter's starting position he does have sea resources he does have stone copper is here there are pigs okay fish up there and some clams and there is fish down there as well okay now, um, they have enough land to make uh, big empires without having to reach astronomy. So there is that. That is not too important then. Uh, let's get rid of those and let's see the big, big favorite in the, his opening game, Pakal II at home to Peter. So let's get this game going and see what's going to happen eventually. Now... They both settled. Let's see where they send their second city. Settler is on for Pakal at the moment. Turn 50 almost. And both of them with the second city almost at the same time, I have to say. Going a little bit north while Peter is coming east. And Peter has the third city going north. The northern shoreline coming east. He has four cities, Pakal has only two. Peter is expanding well in the opening stages of the game. And Pakal, yeah, Pakal, the favorite. He has fewer cities. Turn 120, I missed the 1 AD deadline, but five Russian cities, three Mayan cities. Now Pakal is starting to go towards Peter, but Peter has grabbed the midway point in this big island, a big continent um, between them, and that means that he is able to grab a lot of land over in the west. While Pakal, well, he has fewer cities. Uh, the question is whether he can develop them to become better than Peter's cities, but now Peter is up to 11 to 6. He has really impressed me in the opening stages of this game, Peter. He was very fast at expansion, and the Russian leader surely has a chance in this game now. This game is a lot more open than I anticipated uh, before it started. Both of them are getting guilds, both of them are getting banking. Peter with an advantage, 14 cities to 10. Now Pakal is going for not astronomy. Peter is going for astronomy. He's trying to expand into the new world. Peter is actually also then happy with Pakal, as it may seem. 
Yes, please. Pakal has founded the Apostolic Palace. Pakal has the Apostolic Palace under Hinduism, which means that in theory he could. And Peter has, well, I think he has circumnavigated the globe. But now, if Peter is too friendly, or too happy with Pakal, this could be a Pakal Diplo victory. I don't really know. Peter has the biggest empire with 19 cities to Pakal's 12, but with Peter being so friendly towards, well, he is not friendly, he's pleased. But um, if he votes for Pakal, we could see a Diplo win here. But I don't think that Peter should do that because he is stronger than Pakal. He should press on. He is expanding, taking the continent down in the southwest and leaving the continent to the east. Almost to entirely to Pakal. He has one city there. <laughs> Peter. Turn 278 and 21 to 17. But Pakal, he has come closer in the city count department right now. And there he took a one tile island out in the ocean and he also took up in the Arctic a place. Peter with 23 cities, Pakal with 19. This is a lot closer than what I thought it would be and I am really not sure who is going to end up winning this game. Pakal is finishing off his golden age as we close in on turn 300. There we are, 325 Peter cities, 20 Pakal the second cities, and Pakal on electricity, going for radio next. Oh, I missed to build the Sistine Chapel, you can probably uh, just stop the video and go back and see. And there is another 21 Pakal cities, 26 Peter. Peter is going towards rifling, while Pakal is going for mass media. And turn 316, we have not yet seen a war, and with Peter being pleased, and Pakal, I'm not so sure Pakal is interested in attacking, we we'll just have to wait and see, I don't really know. Pakal is building wonders, now he is even higher in score than Peter. Pakal is higher in score with 22 cities than Peter with 26, and this game could be turning now, Pakal could be taking over this game and showing that he really is the favorite. Oh, this is tense. It is not over yet, it is not over yet. Peter does have 26 cities, he is a very big empire and there is, he is a lot stronger, he is twice as strong as Pakal, militarily speaking. Pakal has only 50% of the strength of Peter if you look at the list down there, but Pakal is now going for industrialism, while Peter is on electricity, industrialism is here, and Peter gets electricity. Pakal has another golden age, and there is aluminum, and we have war, we have war, Peter 27, Pakal down to 21 cities, Peter took one city from Pakal, Pakal gets rifling now, Pakal is down to 20 cities, Peter, Peter is grabbing the chance, he has the chance of a lifetime to beat Pakal in the opening round. And he is twice as strong as the Maya leader, he has 28 cities to Pakal's 20, we are at overturn 350 but Peter if he continues this war but Pakal is now getting stronger 0.6 of that of Peter 0.7 is Peter losing units is Pakal winning but Peter is grabbing cities and that is important 29 Pakal is down to 19 cities now but I also look at the number of strength. Now Pakal has 0.8, the strength of Peter, down to 0.7 again. If Peter continues to lose units and giving Pakal the opportunity to become as strong as him, this that then the game, the war could turn. This is tense now. Who is going to end up winning this? If Peter can continue to push on and not lose power compared to Pakal, grab another. No, Pakal is back to 20 cities. Pakal has taken a city back. Pakal must have taken a city back. He could have revolted back culturally, though, uh, because that is possible in this game. I have allowed that that uh, cities that are captured can culture flip back to the previous owner. That is possible, but it 
It is also possible that he could have taken it in war because he's not dropping in power compared to Peter. He started the war at 0.5, which means 50%. Now he's up to 0.7, which is 70%. So Pakal is holding his own. He really is. 20 cities to Peter's 28. We are at turn 3, almost 380, 377 right now. Pakal is up to 21. He is turning the tide around, is he? 21 to Peter's 27. He has grabbed back another city. Oh, Peter, are you losing this? Are you losing? You are up against one of the favorites to win the league, though. And there is the peace treaty. Pakal came back. He's up to 21 cities versus Peter's 27. He was down to 19 for a little while there. Now I'm interested to see if that power changes, the power number changes. If you look at the list, the leader list, uh, we see that Peter, it says Peter, and then it says 0 0.7 in red. That means that Pakal II has 0.7 or 70% the strength, military strength of Peter. He started the first war at only 0.5. Now he's up at 0.7, but now Peter is getting assembly line as well. And Pakal is on refrigeration, so we'll just have to see if assembly line can change things for Peter. We are still having the peace treaty, and now Peter is on industrialism as well. And a factory was destroyed by enemy infiltrators. Wow, so Peter is going to use spies against Pakal's factories. Peter is going for industrialism while Pakal is on plastics. If Peter, with his uh, number of cities, 27 cities versus 21, reaches industrialism and can start to get his own factories, I think industrialism is needed for factories. I don't know. <clears throat> I am crazy. I don't even remember that. <laughs> Peter is increasing in strength. Pakal is down to 0.6. I think that the next declaration of war, if Peter attacks as soon as he can and don't allow Pakal to build any more. Now Peter is also on plastics and Peter is, oh Pakal is down to 0.5. Peter is building units. Peter is building units. I think he is preparing another attack. This could be it. Eiffel Tower, Peter built the Eiffel Tower by the way, Pakal got a little bit of gold for that. And he's getting flight, airplanes, could be an advantage of course, but with 0.5 he's in danger of getting attacked by Peter again and this game is so far from over. We are at turn 405 and I am so excited for this, Pakal, can you do it, Peter, can you surprise us all? And we see a customs house was destroyed by enemy infiltrator. That means that Peter is using his spies against Pakal. Pakal is going for the computers. Peter is on biology. We are at turn 410. Peter with 27 cities versus Pakal's 21. It has been that way for a very long time. And I'm really excited to see what's going to happen now. Peter has a golden age. Is he going to use that? To build up more armies. Pakal is going for robotics and Peter is going for satellites. Peter has built another city, founded another city, is up to 28 and Pakal this is at the moment unless we get another war. This is a space race. Peter declares, Peter declares, Peter declares, we have the next war, we are at turn 421 and Peter is attacking Pakal. Pakal is a lot weaker, can Peter start his offensive getting cities again as he did last time and this time without losing them in the second half of the war? That is the question, Pakal is still on 21 cities by the way, Peter has not managed to grab one in war yet. But he is looking to get there, 28 to 21. He is twice as strong as Pakal. He should be able to grab a few cities off the Mayan leader to win this game. But it doesn't look like he is doing it fast enough. Point six, Pakal is building up his military. It's either Peter losing more units and or Pakal building more units. Well, I doubt Pakal is building more units. Now it's down to 0.5 again, which means he has lost probably a little bit. But 
but Pakal, yeah, he is holding his own again against Peter. Peter has not been able to break down the Mayan leader in his attacks, even though he has had the bigger empire and he is twice as strong com uh, according, in according to the game. Turn 4, 35. And it doesn't look like Peter is going to break through and start rolling over Pakal. Pakal is defending extremely well with only half the military power as that of Peter. And this is a very good defense by Pakal. But the problem is that Pakal is not going to win the game this way. So I still think that this is a good game for Peter and Peter. Turn 440, okay, you still have time to do this Peter, you still have time, you adopt police state, 28 to 21, but you need fission, both of them are going to get fission by the way, but Bakal is up to 0.6 the strength of Peter again, I see that down there on the leader list, so he is keeping up with Peter though he's being attacked. Peter has not been able to get, Pakal is going for composites, Peter is going for refrigeration and Pakal has 0.6 the strength of Peter right now which means that Peter is losing more units than Pakal and no cities has been changing hands uh, this war, not this far and this is tense, this is tense fighting, we are 50 turns away, less than 50 turns away from the end of the game. And if they cannot break each other, if Peter cannot break Pakal, and Pakal cannot, because he is in war, he cannot tech into space because he needs to use his resources building units. We may very well be witnessing a draw in the very first game in Division 1. That would have been a surprise. But Composites is here for Pakal. And there is the peace, there is peace, there is peace. Peter didn't manage to get a single city off of Pakal during all of this fighting. And now with only 40 plus something turns left of the game, Pakal is on superconductors. Peter is going for, is that advanced flight? I think it is. <clears throat> Sorry, Pakal with 0.7 the strength of Peter. So Peter has lost a lot of units in that war and he didn't gain any ground. Which means that Pakal is not going to lose this game as it stands. Turn 461 and now we have civilized jubilers on the scene. That means a lot of stuff culture perhaps but Pakal is not going for a cultural victory because he is taking superconductors and he is probably going to think about going into space so what's he doing next I see laser in eight that is a little bit late I think maybe he needs to tech a little bit faster yeah lasers now in five Pakal he needs to put more commerce into research simply because he is not going to reach space if he waits too long if or we imagine if he launches the spaceship one turn too late that would be terrible but it's 30 turns left so you should still have the time to do it Pakal but now there is the next war now there is the next war and he has to focus on taking out Peter or defending against Peter which means that he is not going to reach space in time now is he 27 turns left Peter is attacking at least he is trying and he's doing his very best to try to get this game won but Pakal is 0.7 is 70% the strength he's not going to break but there Pakal lost the city Peter took a city in this war so he's 29 to 20 with 23 turns left can he start rolling over Pakal is he able to start grabbing more cities does he have enough of an army on the borders to take more cities Peter you are in a really hurry if you want that domination because I guess you will have to take at least 10 cities off of Pakal in the last 20 turns and that that is going to be difficult. Pakal is on fusion. 
Peter is on last media 29 to 20 we have 19 turns left this has been a great game between two great leaders and Peter he has impressed me he started off the game by out expanding Pakal and he is, has been bigger the whole game. He has not been able to take advantage of that to kill off Pakal though. Pakal has been very strong defending his position but Peter has been trying and trying and trying and if he continues to play like this in the rest of the games this season I cannot see Peter going down but that is another thing. This has been an impressive performance by Peter, but now Peter must have lost a lot because Pakal is suddenly 1.4 times as strong as Peter. I don't know what happened there. Um, Pakal is some prop. Well, Peter must have lost so many units. I have no idea what happened there. But Pakal is suddenly 1.7 times as strong. Now Pakal is up to 22 cities. Yes, he is turning this all around. Now Peter is down to, oh, Peter is losing. What are you doing, Peter? What happened towards the end there? Peter was stronger than Pakal the whole game, uh, all the way up until now. And suddenly now, but Pakal, he doesn't have time to win domination because we are only three turns left. So Peter, if this had gone on and continued it looks like Pakal would have won it but there it is time and uh, time is not a victory that is a draw it's one point for each I don't give out two points if you cannot reach a victory condition other than time before turn 500 so this has been a dramatic and a war ridden and I am really impressed by Peter in this game, even though he lost a lot towards the end. And if this game had continued beyond turn 500, Pakal would have been victorious. I am sure of it because now he is almost twice as strong as Peter and he would have continued and he would have crushed him. But Peter, he had a chance. He didn't manage to get Pakal, but that is only because Pakal is a very strong leader and one of the favorites to win the league. It ended with a draw. Whew. Oh. Let me just catch my breath and then we'll go on through to the graphs. Well, at least let's get to the world history. <laughs> oh man, what a game. Here we are. I will be back with some stats after this. Enjoy the music.
What a game. Peter attacked Pakal three times. The first one he technically won because he captured more cities than he lost. The second was a standoff because nobody captured any cities. And the third time he attacked he lost because he lost more cities than he won. He tried his very best, but Bakal is a strong leader. He couldn't break him down, even though he had a very good game. I'm impressed by Peter, I have to say. Let's go exit here and let's see if we can get into the graphs finally. Yeah, this is the score. Approximately from here and all the way almost to the end, Peter had the score lead. Then Pakal went up above him in GNP. Yeah, they are very strong, both of them here manufacturing. We see Peter was a little bit above here, but still he did manage to get it. Yeah, crop yield approximately the same. Power. Peter, he had a lot more power than Pakal here, but he just couldn't break down the Mayan leader. So he couldn't take advantage of his cu culture. He was a little bit better as Pionashi was a little bit better. Demographics than Pakal and Peter. And we see Peter has more GNP. He has more manufacturing, but he has less food. And food can be used to whip units. Soldiers, this is the end, of course. And now, of course, towards the end, because Peter lost a lot of units probably towards the end. Now Pakal has more. And... Uh, Land area, Peter was the number one, but population then almost 45 million versus only 13 million for Peter. So that's not too good. If you look at the top six, top six cities and the wonders, let's take a look at the wonders first. Let's go to the bottom. Stonehenge in Moscow and then the Great Wall, Mahabodhi, the Great Lighthouse and the Oracle in the BC area and the rest of the wonders came in the AD area and you can look at it if you want. Let's go take a look at the cities. Moscow is number one, Russian Mutal is number two for Pakal, St. Petersburg of Peter is third, Chichen Itza is fourth for Pakal, then Kalakmul, Pakal and Lakama. Pakal is the next. So Peter with two cities, one and three, and Pakal for the rest. Statistics, Pakal, 22 cities built, race none, five religions, three golden ages. He has 45 windmills, 28 towns, 20 farms. And what did he build in his cities? 25 granaries, 24 lighthouses, 21 barracks, down to two Christian temples. Let's go page down. <clears throat> Sorry. National Epic, Versailles, Sistine Chapel. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Mining ink is here. Uh, worth noticing. Then page down. Oracle, Hagen, Sophie, Apostolic Palace. Yeah. And Castle and the Spiral Minaret. So let's go to the top and see what you currently have in units. 75 mechanist infantry, 24 marines, 19 workers. And you also have a workboat and a paratrooper. What did you build? That's going to be interesting to see. Only 55 workboats, yay! 53 marines, 43 workers, 41 frigates, and down to 6 spies. Page down. Confusion missionaries, and the last one is a scout. You built a Hulkan. You only built one Hulkan, okay. You killed, let's see, Pakal. 107 Cossacks. That's a lot of Cossacks. 32 tanks, 25 riflemen, and you also killed the privateer. You lost 39 frigates, 27 marines, 25 artillery, and all the way down to two machine guns. Okay, that's it. Let's look at Peter's numbers. 27 cities built, zero raised, two religions, two golden ages. Currently you have 89 windmills and 29 workshops and 27 towns. And you built in your cities 28 granaries, 27 barracks, 26 stables and lighthouses, down to four observatories. Let's go page down. Starting intelligence agency, Eiffel Tower, Wall Street. We see a lot of stuff, University of Sankur, Statue of Liberty is there. Page down. 
all the way down to the Mahabodhi at the bottom. I do get hanging gardens and great lighthouse and great library and stuff, aluminum co-created construction, Sid, Shu, Sid Sushi, Muslim, and Masolos, all good stuff. Top current year number of units are 52 infantry, 25 workers and 14 marines. You have a destroyer as well. What did you build then? You built 99 Cossacks. 99. <laughs> if you had built one more. 71 longbows, 43 marines, down to 9 catapults down there. Go, let's go page down. And we see oh, one other full page of thing. Two bombers as well. And page down again. Ironclads. One horse archer. You got the spy. You built one privateer among great artists. You got killed. 39 frigates. 27 marines. All the way down to two machine guns. Your losses then 107 Cossacks. And all the way down to one privateer. So, hey, yeah. That was some wars, I tell you. <laughs> so, let's go and take a look at the cities next. Okay, here we go. Just one more turn. We are currently on Pakal, so let's take a look at his cities here. We can see all on the same screen, which is good. Let's sort by population. Isamal, pop 20 pops, Lakama, Kalakmul, and Isan Kanak with 19, and we see further down. Uh, building some spaceship parts here, and also a lot of units, but also Hollywood, yeah. We see that um, a lot of base food here, 40 is very good. But let's take a look at Peter's cities. Um, there we go. From Pakal over to Peter, okay. Okay, so while they are fighting, let's just click on this. Peter has too many cities to show on one screen, so let's go with Pops here. And his biggest city is Pop 13, Moscow. Vladivostok is also 13. Then St. Petersburg, Ekaterinburg, Yakutsk, and Khabarovsk is 12. He is building up his military for the continued war effort and had the game gone on longer. Well, I said during the game that because he lost so much power that it would have been Pakal. But looking at what he is producing here, and he has more, actually more cities than Pakal still. So I'm not so sure that Pakal could have won this actually. The lowest one, uh, Chelyabinsk, uh, size 3. So let's go to the bottom. Oh! Ah, okay, <laughs> that was actually the bottom, Chilabinsk. Okay, so it did fit everyone on the same page. Okay, then you have everything. The only city not building units are Samara building an airport. Well, that was it. It was a really, really tight game. I'm impressed by what Peter did here. But in the end, Pakal passed him in score, which means that when you look at the table... Spoiler alert! Results and updated league tables follows after this screen. Pakal, when... Um, well... It was a draw, it was a time, which means that they both get one point, so both Pakal and Peter with one point. However, Pakal, with a score per turn difference of positive two and Peter negative two, due to Pakal's score, leading to a score per turn for 12 and score per turn against 10, which is the opposite for Peter. So Pakal still has the upper edge here then, with a positive two score per turn difference with his one point. But this means that Peter is not going to be bottom of the league, because I do not believe that we will see only draws here. I will expect this maybe to be the only one. It was exciting. It was very tense. Who and now for the next game, I am almost forgetting who is the next game. It is Julius Caesar versus Willem van Oranje. So I hope to see you back then, and it's coming in just a little bit. See you then. Bye for now.